Look at all these children that are coming to see Molly. Me Molly can leve many. Molly come Shelly. Libre nu, libreli, libre salu nu. Molly sees fear in the other children's faces and hides herself away. At last, she's coaxed out to be presented to her visitors. Although she overcomes one ordeal, she has a bigger one to face. With a mask to protect her from dust and infection, she's taken to church. Her mother wants to tell the people of Haiti the miracle of Mali. A year later, Marley passes unnoticed in the crowd. Her face has healed, she's gained weight, and after four years of enforced silence, an operation allows her to speak. No longer does Marley feel the need to hide herself away. Marley's getting along very well. She can now talk. Before, she couldn't communicate with us. She couldn't use her tongue. We'd lost all hope of hearing her again. This is a big change in Mali's life. At last, Mali can tell her own story. It was so painful. I could feel my face was swollen with blood. It was so big, it reached down to my stomach. When everyone else was eating, I couldn't because my throat was so small. I couldn't hear or see properly, and no one could understand what was happening to me. They had put a false jaw this long in my face. It means my mouth can open and close and allows me to eat and speak. She is proud of herself now. She sees that she is somebody. There has been such a transformation since the operation. And that transformation has had an effect not only on her, but also on us. It's her face which was big. Her mind was fine. She's always been mentally strong. She never lost her mind. Since everyone is so kind to me now, and my face looks nice, I no longer feel I want to die. I don't do it anymore. I have been given hope. Without teeth, it's difficult for her to pronounce words well. 
But her family and friends can easily understand what she's saying. When I had my big face, my family gave me so much help. My sisters sang to me. They included me in everything that they did. They used to dance with me and always showed me how much they loved me. They have always been with me. Now Stelacy helps me writing, playing school with me. The extremes of her illness lost Marley four years of education. With her sister's help, she's catching up fast. Marley is growing again. According to medical science, it means her condition, the fibrous dysplasia, may be recurring. Dr. Gomez has called her back to the hospital for a checkup. The journey brings back memories of the worst times Marley has faced. Looking back, it was such a nightmare for me. Not only was I suffering with the pain in my face with the size of that thing, but also it was making it almost impossible for me to breathe. I was always gasping for breath. On the left side of my face, the lesion was pushing against my eye and blinding me. I thought I would lose my sight. It was a nightmare. When I went into the operation, I knew I wouldn't die. After all, Jesus died and was reborn. I knew that even if I died, I would come back to life just like Jesus. When I saw my face in the mirror after the operation, I cried because I saw that Dr. Gomez had cut my face and it wasn't the same anymore. But it was no longer big. It wasn't the face I was born with, but it was getting normal again. I saw my sisters and father crying when we all met up. It made me cry too, because I saw how much they loved me. They have always loved me. When I came back to Haiti, there was a girl who was scared of me and didn't want to look at me. I ran back into the house, into the room where I had lived with my big face. But when I came out, I saw that people did like me. Of course, people saw the difference. They just hadn't looked at me properly. I felt better when they kissed me. But Marley's long nightmare is not yet over. Excited at being back in Miami, Marley's looking forward to seeing Dr. Gomez again. I want him to cut this, to get rid of this. I want to be beautiful. I know that it's not finished, but I would like to be able to look at my face and say that it is beautiful. To be able to show myself off and say that I am pretty again. It's six months since Marley last saw Dr. Jesus Gomez. He needs to check on the synthetic bones in Marley's new face and on the condition of her fibrous dysplasia. Me, I see some remnants of the lesion, especially in the palate and especially in the right nostril. Okay, nothing that really concerns me. Ah. I know, I'm sorry about that. All the challenge at this point, you know, they have been solved and we have been successful to this point. 
I don't like to say that you know that she's kind of like an experiment, but we have used a lot of uh, unique techniques, okay, to reconstruct her face. No, that's it's looking great. I think that she has a pretty good chance to live like a completely normal life for many many years. I can feel the screws here. Okay, they're kind of superficial. Oh. Probably we're going to remove you know one of them is, if we need it, and we're going to reclose everything. We're going to do a panoramic, but she's looking pretty good. In the end, you know, she's going to look pretty much like her mom, okay? Because, you know, she's, she's very similar to her mom, okay? But, of course, you know, we have to, you know, to uh, work a little bit on these scars and, you know, correct this, a, a little bit of the hypertrophic tissue that we have here, and that's going to take time. I would say that the final uh, touch, okay, if you can call it in some way, is going to be done probably in two years. There's some way to go before Marley's new face is finished. She'll be undergoing more cosmetic surgery, as well as intensive physio and speech therapy. It hurts, yes. We. Oui. <laughs> At the same time that we carve the palate, we're going to be able to regrade a little bit of the columnella. That is the portion of, you know, this portion of the nose. Also, we're going to remove all these, you know, uh, scar band. This is called a hypertrophic scar. Dr. Yeah, you, you in here too? Right All right, just sit there here. Um, we got everybody yeah. here. Everybody here. <laughs> everybody here. But you have to smile. <laughs> everybody looks so pretty except me. <laughs> Marley's back home for a special celebration. She has lots of visitors and a new dress. Happy birthday! It's her 15th birthday, a day her family thought she'd never reach. Thank you very much. Marley and her sisters and friends have planned a special surprise for the guests. They're performing a play that echoes her own story. Marley is taking the role of a destitute mother of a sick child. They beg money to pay the doctor. But he says that as his name is Jesus, he will perform the operation free of charge. The child's recovery is nothing short of miraculous. And Mother Marley gives thanks for the surgeon Jesus. And the local church choir have their own message for Marley. Marley's invincible courage and faith have brought her through her terrible ordeal. She takes her place in medical history as the subject of unique surgical challenges and as the only person who survived such an extreme case of the rare disease fibrous dysplasia. Now she's planning her future. My first choice is I want to be a cook in my own kitchen. At home, I love to bake cakes. My sisters always do it the wrong way. I laugh at them because they get it wrong and often burn their fingers. Marley is the best cook. <laughs> and what are Marley's thoughts about her long-term prospects? 
I don't know what to say. I don't know if anyone will want to marry me. If I ever have children, I don't know.